So I really have had my fair share of playtime with several different gaming mice, but in the end, the Razor Viper Ultimate has me crawling back every single time. But then I came across this guy, which is the Glorious Model D Wireless. It's an ergonomic gaming mouse that has seriously exceeded my expectations. I just made a full review after using this mouse for a few weeks, but wanted to put these two head to head because I feel like at the moment they're kind of tied for my top spot, and still they are both very solid options. So if you are in the market for either of these gaming mice, I hope that this video will be of help. Both Razer and Glorious have some things that make them really stand out, but of course that's not without their drawbacks, so with that said, let's jump straight into it. When you buy the Razer Viper Ultimate, what's included in this sleek looking box is the mouse itself, along with the wireless charging dock if you want with that option, a USB receiver, and a micro USB to USB-A charging cable. To connect to your PC, the receiver can be plugged straight into an available USB-A port, into the charging dock, which then uses the included cable to plug into a remaining USB-A port on your system, or you can just use the mouse wired by plugging the cable straight into the port at the front. With the way it's designed, you don't ever have to worry that the cable is going to get in the way, but I do find it annoying that at this price point of $150, we still don't get USB Type-C. Looking over at the box from Glorious, it has a very clean design which, upon opening, contains the mouse itself, along with its USB-C charging cable, receiver extension dongle, USB receiver, and the stope sticker which alone makes it better than the Viper. Because my PC is so close to the mouse, I've never felt the need to use the extender dongle with the Model D, but if you do want that receiver to be placed up close or are having any sort of tracking issues, I definitely think it's worth using. The one thing that's a little annoying is that there's nowhere on the mouse that you can store the receiver while it's not in use, unlike with the Viper where you can either have it in the dock or on the underside compartment. Now one of the main factors to consider is the price, Glorious is already miles ahead in this department with the Model D being priced at $80, whereas the Viper is $150 or we can get it for around $130 if you decide against the stand. But the price alone doesn't tell a full story, so looking at the design of each, this is obviously subjective, but in my opinion, the Viper looks much better in the gaming setup. Really, it's just one of the best looking mice available, period. To make the mouse lighter, Glorious uses his honeycomb design, which does take away from the overall aesthetic, but having so much playtime with it, it's kind of grown on me, and the fact that your hand will almost always be covering it, truthfully, it makes it a non-issue. Staying consistent with the color scheme I have in the setup, I went with the white versions of each mouse, the Mercury Viper Ultimate, and Matte White Model D, and I'm so glad I did. The Viper's whole shell is white, but there's gray accents on the four side buttons, the scroll wheel, and the side grips. The Model D is white all around, with the scroll wheel, two side buttons, and top button being black. I find that the front actually looks quite a bit like the G-Pro-X Superlight, but once you begin to turn around, you can see how its ergonomic design can make for a much better experience during those longer gaming sessions. The most apparent difference with the Model D is the shape. It's much more ergonomic, being raised higher towards the left side of the mouse, and making for a more comfortable place to rest your thumb at the side. Being someone who's used the Logitech MX Master 2S extensively over the past couple years, I've gotten very accustomed to its design, and when I saw this from Glorious, I was very excited to try it out. But Understandably, it's not for everyone. Important to note as well is that it's not ambidextrous, unlike the Viper, which has buttons on both sides and a consistent shape across its flatter build. As I've said, on each side of the Viper, they have the rubber grips, which I've always really liked and found comfortable, but since making content about this mouse, people have a very love-hate relationship with them. While the Viper isn't quite as ergonomic as the Model D, I do believe that these grips help for you to remain comfortable when you're gaming for extended periods of time. In my testing, I found that both mice are optimal for a fingertip grip, but you can definitely get away with a palm grip on the Model D. However, with it being a more medium to large size mouse, it's most suited for those with bigger hands. As for the build quality of both, I think they each is very solid. They're both made of plastic, but the Vipers feels a lot more textured, whereas with the Model D, the smooth matte plastic does feel actually very similar to the Superlight. While Razer does have two more buttons on the side than Glorious, I still find that the ones on the Model D being much larger are far easier to click and are more reliable. This has a lot to do with the Viper buttons being recessed into the body almost completely flush and take a lot less force to actuate. Something that's started to happen a lot over the past month or two is that the buttons will start to get stuck and feel a little mushy, which I've never experienced from Glorious. But even with that said, having two more buttons on an ambidextrous build definitely is a selling point for many people. The scroll wheel I found on the Model D has a rubber coating that is very comfortable and makes for a super smooth and quiet scroll. On the Viper scroll wheel, it has very similar grips to the ones found on the side, which if you do like those, you'll like this. It makes it really easy to get at, but the rattle is very noticeable. Both the sound when you're scrolling up and down and the feel of it is very inconsistent. Weighing them up, the Viper Ultimate comes in at 78 grams, but it is worth noting that this is only on the Mercury and Quartz editions due to the coating it's using, but if you do instead choose the black version, it will be 74 grams. The Model D then comes in at just 69 grams, which I find is actually a very noticeable difference, especially when you're holding them up side by side. 
But to be completely honest, I don't think you're going to be at a disadvantage by opting for the heavier Viper. And there are times when I feel that paired with the side grips, it actually allows me to have a little more precision with my aim. For switches, Razors are rated for 70 million clicks, with Glorious rating theirs for 80 million. The Model D provides a very clean sounding and consistent feeling click, with the Viper having a more clacky sound, but with a click that does feel more satisfying. To give an idea of what each is like, here's a quick sound test. <laughs> As far as straight performance goes, they feel just as quick, but I did get curious, so I loaded up a clicking test just to see if the switch is feeling better on the Viper, made it slower or faster than the Model D, and they didn't. I was getting a consistent like 6.4 clicks per second. With both, I've had no issues with double clicking or latency, and honestly, neither is a drastically different experience overall. Razer is using their Focus Plus sensor that has a max DPI of 20,000, and Glorious is using their BAM sensor, which is very similar with a max DPI of 19,000. The button at the top of the Model D is placed very well, and assuming you do map it to cycling your DPI sensitivity, it's much easier to get at than the Vipers, which is at the bottom of the mouse. Both sensors feel super responsive and track flawlessly. I tend to play around a 750 DPI on both, and whether I'm sniping on the Viper or spraying and praying with the Model D, they're both great. One of the things that impressed me the most about the Model D was actually the stock feet. Sliding them around on my new drop mouse pad, I found that it glided extremely well. Combined with the lightweight build of the Model D, flicking around the mouse was just a breeze. This isn't to say that the stock feet found on the Viper are by any means bad, but I just prefer the ones from Glorious. Although for any reason, if you do feel like you still need it, the Model D has some additional skates included in the box. Quite a few people have mentioned picking up aftermarket feet for especially the Viper, but also the Model D, however, I really don't feel like it's 100% necessary. The better life on both of the mice have been pretty good, I've never had a time when they've died on me. To be honest, the Viper is much more convenient to charge just by plopping it onto the stand whenever I'm not playing, but with the USB Type-C port on the Model D, I don't have to go rummaging around for micro USB cable if I do misplace the included one. The Viper is rated for 70 hours of battery life, but this is with lighting disabled. With the lighting on, it's going to significantly reduce the time in between charges. I notice it drains very quickly, but you can still expect it to last up to around a week unless you're playing for long sessions every single night. But at least for me, the convenience of just throwing it onto the dock really mitigates this issue. Similarly, the Model D promises to offer 71 hours of life with lighting disabled, but I have actually noticed that it does last significantly longer than the Viper. So for an anecdote, whatever that's worth, I had the mouse set at 60% lighting on a static blue color, and it took roughly three weeks to go from full battery to 5%. Since both the mice are wireless, you could argue that the type of port on it really doesn't matter, but I honestly think that having a USB-C port, especially at this price point, is just a necessity. The Model D has five lighting zones on each side of the mouse, with one more being underneath the scroll wheel, which I kind of prefer to the Vipers, which is just a single logo at the back. It does look clean, but unfortunately your hand is going to be covering it pretty much all the time. There is also lighting on the underside of the Viper's dock, and it honestly looks so good on the desk. Just my only gripe with it is that whenever you put the mouse on a charge, it'll change from whatever lighting effect you have configured to a breathing effect that signifies the battery percentage. Although I've kind of gotten used to the green, and at times actually like it because the contrast it gives on the desk along with the Founders Edition RTX card looks pretty good. To configure all these effects, you need to download either Synapse 3 or Glorious Core. Within Synapse 3 for the Viper, you can change the lighting effects of both the mouse and the dock to a variety of different effects, but I've kept them at a solid blue color at 50% brightness to match the vibes of my desk. In here, you can also remap the buttons, adjust the DPI and the stages you want to have, all of which can be saved to a profile within the onboard memory. Additionally, you can configure the power settings so that the mouse can auto enter sleep mode or go into a low power mode, but I actually don't recommend using this, especially if you're going to be playing online competitive games, as this will mess with the tracking speeds that you can achieve on the mouse. Lastly, you can calibrate the sensor for different mouse pads, but I honestly have not found this to make any noticeable difference, though still thought it was worth mentioning. Opening up Glorious Core and clicking on the Model D, you're able to change the lighting effects and brightness, but do note that you cannot adjust the different zones on here individually. As I mentioned, I just have it set to a static blue color at 60% brightness, and unlike in Synapse, you can actually save the lighting profile into its onboard memory. Tabbing over, you can configure all the buttons, but by default the top is set to the DPI cycling and sides as forward and back. Lastly, you can configure all the DPI settings, add stages, adjust the pulling rate, and the debounce time all in this tab. 
The biggest benefit with the software is that while it's only compatible with Windows, all of the lighting effects and performance settings do get saved to the onboard memory, so it doesn't have to be running and will still work flawlessly if connected to a macOS or Linux machine. And with that, these two are honestly some of the best gaming mice that you could pick up right now. Again, I think pretty much the biggest factor to consider is the pricing. The Viper comes in at a hefty $150 price tag, whereas the Model D is almost half that at $80. Now, I do think the Viper overall has a slight edge in a few places, but it's not without its own drawbacks. And for $70 more, for a lot of people with what Glorious is offering at their price tag, it's really hard to beat. Both mice are built very well, but with the Model D, you get an 8 gram or 4 gram lighter body, depending on which color option Viper you're comparing it to, and buttons that honestly feel much higher quality. The design is subjective, but I do think that Razer takes the cake in that department. As far as comfort goes, again, it's really down to your personal preference. The grips on the Viper are very comfortable, but the ergonomic design of the Model D make those longer gaming sessions or just time spent doing work at the desktop much more pleasurable. Battery life on the Model D is significantly better, but with the convenience of the wireless charging dock from Razer, I'd honestly say it's not something that should be worried about much. Honestly, you're not going to go wrong with choosing either of these mice. They could both easily be my end game. If I had to pick one, I think it would still be the Viper, but I really love the Model D. I'd be happy to use either of these for several years. I'm super interested in what you guys think. Is the price hike of the Viper worth it, or is what Glorious offers just too hard to beat? Let me know in the comments. So with that, I've been cold. It's raining. I got to get out of here fast. But if you did enjoy, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. See more tech and gaming related content in the very near future. That's all for today. So hope to see you next time. Take care.